Yes, thanks to both presenters. My name is Dennis Signolo. I'm representing the European Trade Union Committee for Education, ETUCE. The comment perhaps I would like to share with you briefly is directed to the second presenter, Stefan. Thank you very much. The results you shared corroborate the evidence we collected in 2012 in a much broader survey in terms of the number of countries that participated, um, where there were very high stress levels uh, linked to the working hours of uh, school leaders. So that's a serious issue. And our conclusion from that study, or one of the conclusions, was that it's important to distribute leadership so that the school principal shares her responsibility with colleagues who are also teachers, but also with education support personnel. And then the other important thing relates to one of the slides you showed earlier on where you asked uh, school leaders about their preferred tasks, something to that effect. We did that. But what we discovered was that, in fact, there is a big difference between what they want to do and what they actually do. There's a big gap. It's a yawning gap. So it's also important to check what they actually do. So the intervention will de close the gap between what they actually do, which is mainly administrative, and what they want to do, which is mainly pedagogical. So in your study, and maybe from your experience, what would be the best way of ensuring that school leaders have more time to support teachers, to support students, in other words, to carry out pedagogical tasks because they are trapped in administrative work by mm. and large. Mm. Obviously, a, a very simple and easy answer is provide them more time in, in the school. That means if they have a bigger school also for the deputies or that they have a time pool which they can distribute on various of the stuff for, for a school management uh, tasks. But I think this is not enough to think about that. It's also about, in the German-speaking context, they have no secretaries, so many tasks like filling in Excel files could be done by someone else who is more motivated than themselves filling them in, and then they fill them in even lousy, that's my assumption, at least with some in the interview study. Uh, a third idea would be to really check, are all these administrative tasks sensible? Some might be sensible and important for system monitoring purposes, but maybe they are not communicated well that they are important. Um, and then um, also get rid of some of the administrative tasks. So I really think there's an opportunity. In our qualitative study, and then we checked that um, we had uh, in one of the states, a principal had the task, this is a, this is a state, I don't name it now, it's 2,000 schools, and they have the task to write a report on school development um, um, activities and stuff development planning and this is roughly that's what we calculated a one day activity this is eight to ten hours activity and these two thousand people did that over the last five years so they submitted this report to the at that time it was Landesverwaltungsamt or the, the, the state administrative office uh, we consulted with them, what did they do with this? They sent all this information further on to the state-run teacher training college. We asked what did they do with that. Uh, they said, yeah, we don't do anything, we just archive it because it was the administrative office checking the reports. So we found out over five years, 2,000 people times one day activity and even one principal in our survey had this assumption and said, I submitted my holiday report last year. I never got a call back, and I would just uh, excuse myself, sorry for handing in the wrong report. So th there is some indication, indication that we could really check on cer certain administrative tasks they are doing. Yeah? And then it is very much also on the profession itself. Maybe this is a very good excuse not facing difficulties in staff situations or dealing with parents. Oh, I'm busy with the administrative task. Because obviously these kind of difficulties, if you have uh, in our items difficult staff, staff problems, difficult parents, this is not much liked. It's not liked at all in Switzerland. It's more liked in, in Germany. And this says something about the own professional understanding. And this comes through training and development opportunities. This comes to setting expectations from the system. 
So I think clearly there's an opportunity to, to work on the understanding and the competences because they have an impact on the motivation to act on certain activities. And there's probably more to say. <laughs> Thank you. More questions, comments? Thank you. Um, Michael, I, I just wanted to um, comment on the video of the uh, conductor, which was very interesting and it sort of connected with people, you could tell by the response um, in the room. I, I wondered how far you felt it um, indicated something important uh, or covered what you were saying about leadership. One thing that struck me was that, um, it, as a, um, a metaphor for leadership in a school, the, the school conductor is very present there, is very much a focus for the people there. In a school situation, the leader isn't necessarily present, it can't be in all places. And in the research we've done on distributed leadership, for example, arguably the, um, the school leader is very much in the background once you have a process of uh, distributed leadership culture working, so that it's a different kind of set of relationships than perhaps is shown by the conductor in relation to the orchestra. I'm not, say I'm not saying it's not a, a helpful way of thinking about aspects of leadership, but I just wondered, oh, we're interested in your comments on what it might leave out or how it might be looked at critically. Thanks, Philip. Um, very valid question because metaphors are always tricky <laughs> because they open up uh, the perspective for anybody and you can reinterpret them in your way. And the way we use them is to get the metaphoric use uh, in a way that you say, for example, uh, he says, he didn't say it in this uh, interview, but he said, I don't need this stick which usually a conductor has. Yeah? And the stick is usually the predominant uh, instrument a conductor uses. Yeah? And then we would talk about why would it work for him without using the stick. Then we start talking about what is one thing, an instrument, because they get lots of instruments in, in their management trainings, which you think you don't need, or which administrative uh, thing don't you need, and the school will yet become better. Yeah? So it's a matter of getting rid of something, which uh, then he says, uh, do you believe in what you actually do? So he always takes a piece uh, of music, and he says, you have to get rid of all the dirt behind it and see where is the nugget in it. So trying to work with his teachers, get rid of everything in the curriculum, which is in the way of getting to the point. You see, we do it that way. Or for example, an orchestra is only successful if you get something like a common sound of it. Yeah? Because if everybody has his own sound, uh, it won't work. So what would the sound of the school be? Is there really a sound? And you probably all notice when you go into school, and I have the privilege to visit all those successful schools, and the one which will get um, the award next week, uh, awarded by Angela Merkel, uh, or the week after, is a school which is, uh, looks very traditional. And the school head, actually she said, I didn't really want to become a principal, but before somebody else takes over and I, have been to I will be told what to do, I'll do it myself. And she's always in the background. But this school has a sound which, sh which shows that every teacher is in tune what has been arranged. And it's for me, what, what is the most impressive thing um, 
in relationship because uh, leadership can always be uh, developed in relationship is the two aspects responsiveness and demandedness or demandingness yeah always demand more you notice how he tried no I'm not happy with that we can get more these kids get more than you really think uh, they will get yeah? and if he or she pushes in that direction uh, and if they get that from uh, the music um, then uh, I'm happy to I'm happy to uh, use this metaphoric way because I learned it's sometimes easier to go into a different domain, into a different profession, because otherwise they always feel guilty of not doing the right thing if I use with uh, examples from other school heads, for example, with these excellent schools I get. Yeah. But still, coming back, uh, you, you could probably use the metaphor of a jazz ensemble, you know? It, it would be a very different way. How do you... Uh, share leadership if you don't know what the other does. This would be sort of another way of doing it. I think Stefan wants to say something. But that was not the reason why I pressed the button. It was just technical incompetence. Um, <coughs> um, I was also fascinated by the film. And we had 2009 a conductor um, at the symposium and uh, she talked about how she did it. And some of you, we talked about it yesterday evening. And I think uh, uh, orchestra does not work to compare to a school at all. I completely agree, and it would even make this point even stronger. But what was fascinating, uh, besides what Michael said, besides what Michael said, is, is the motivation through using metaphors. Think of the crocodile and think of the elephant, you know, to, to, to make pictures strong, to visionize and to setting expectations. And in our EU project, another EU project, where we looked at the impact of school inspection. It's not the report, yeah. It's not what's, it's the setting expectations. It's working with a framework. It's saying what you expect from, from principals or the school. And I think this can be in such a setting where they are professionals. Maybe someone had a bad day, but he might still be motivated by, by this kind of, of approach of, of yeah, or it's very old actually. This is 50s, no? management by objectives. This is a Harzburger model. It's a very old leadership concept. And I think this is, this is fascinating by, by this kind of... Uh, and this would also work probably for the chess band Michael referred to. A chess band also works with ideas. There's a theme. Yeah, how does it sound? And then they work around this. It's about the idea where they want to go to. And I think this is very cool. Thank you. And the last question, sorry, only one, we can afford that back, lady back there. F further on, lady. Further on. Further on. Two, two, two rows. Oh. Ladies first, <laughs> mainly gay from France. I wanted to come back to Michael's um, uh, big questions about um, facing unemployment of youth, uh, 73 million. And, uh, my uh, question is, um, we all heard um, of all these millions distributed um, in the framework of um, the European Bank for Investment, a lot of millions to develop in each country, two things. One is um, creating jobs. The second is developing skills. And the problem is my country, France, for example, um, <coughs> has a lot of money, but they just want to create artificial jobs and not developing skills. And my question is, how could we manage after these, um, these two days to um, introduce in some countries a good leadership because the people don't see the relation and you explained it very clearly before uh, between school leadership and developing skills thank you for this really <laughs> crucial uh, topic because it has such an impact on our work and life at all as we saw um, 
I don't have the solution, and you said we have two days to find one, or at least uh, emerge into that future. But I'll just give you an example in Austria. I think it's a kind of um, unconscious, uh, unconscious incompetence. People are not aware of that on all strands of the school system. For example, if we, we recently had a study in Austria, uh, how, out of the population of school leavers, how many would be ready to, be, uh, to open up uh, a business on their own and uh, be independent? Out of 10, only one was willing to take up that independence. And you know, when you think of startups nowadays, of entrepreneurship, if a school doesn't really provide the skills, and we have started now looking in the school system, not that we want to send them all uh, into entrepreneurship, but we want to make them independent uh, and uh, bring that in what we call su uh, subjectivation, to, to, to give the agency more elements. And then we found out in our school system uh, there is too much dependency. The inspectors of the ministry, the, the school heads of the inspectors, the, the teachers of the school head. And now we are trying to uh, reshuffle the system by having uh, a stronger focus in our leadership academy where we work with 250 to 300 school heads, at, or, uh, people from this, uh, leaders, peop leaders from the different strands of the system, how they can really get their own uh, relationship between agency and structure so as to change the system eventually and give the individual student more power in their decision making. Yeah? So that would be one way to go, but as you said, it's one of the most challenging questions we have to deal with during two days, and this is not something I can solve. Thank you very much.